This Hi. is Alec from the YouTube channel Technology Connections, and this is his Hyundai Ioniq 5 from the YouTube channel South Korea. We are going to take this car on a 1200 mile road trip from here in Chicago area to somewhere in the middle of Florida with one question in mind. What does an EV road trip look like in America in 2022 if you don't have a Tesla? Let's find out. <laughs> This is the EcoFlow Delta Max. Thanks to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. The Delta Max is a portable powerhouse with 2,000 watt hours of battery capacity. And if that isn't enough for you, you can expand it. This thing has your standard battery box outputs. It has a variety of USB charging options. It has 12 volt DC output, but the real star of the show is on the back. This thing has six AC outlets and the inverter is capable of 1800 watts of output. That number doesn't mean anything to you. That means that anything you can power from a standard wall outlet, you can power with this. Like a tile saw, a miter saw, or even a lift in the middle of a vacant lot for no apparent reason. To monitor and control this thing remotely, there's the EcoFlow app. So for instance, if you're using this in an RV, you can throw this thing down into the cargo hold out of the way, but still have access to it from your phone. To charge the Delta Max, you have lots of options. You can charge it very quickly from a standard wall outlet. You can charge it slightly less quickly from a DC 12 volt car outlet, and it accepts up to 800 watts of solar panel input. Along with this, EcoFlow also sent me their folding solar panel array to play with. When deployed, it can collect up to 400 watts of power from the sun, and when stowed away, fits nicely into this stylish, albeit slightly heavy, carrying case. This thing is an all-in-one ready-to-go solution for an RV, a mobile workshop, an off-grid cabin. This thing has lots of uses, and it has the power to run your life. Not like control, you know what I mean. So if you want to check out an EcoFlow product for yourself, like this Delta Max or the folding solar panel array that they sent me, and I highly recommend you do because I absolutely love this thing, you can do so at the link in the description. And thanks again to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. Let me introduce you to our noble steed for this trip, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Battery specs. This retro-futuristic showstopper has a 700-volt nominal 77.4 kilowatt-hour nickel-manganese-cobalt chemistry battery pack with a max rapid charging rate of... Well, Hyundai doesn't actually say. What they do tell you is that at a 350 kilowatt charger, the car can go from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. The EPA estimated range of the Ionic 5 is 256 miles for the dual motor and 303 miles for the single motor, although there is quite a bit of variance based on wheel size. As standard, the Ionic 5 is rear wheel drive with a single 225 horsepower motor. My car is the dual motor all-wheel drive version, which means I get a second motor for the front axle, which brings the total output up to 325 horsepower. This thing is surprisingly quick. Go! <laughs> I thought that... <laughs> Of electricity. I've never been a passenger in this car with someone driving like that, so. Our journey begins here at the Yorktown Mall with nearly 100% state of charge. We used a better route planner to calculate a good route with charging stops included, and according to it, the first leg of our journey ends 138 miles away in Lafayette, Indiana, where we'll stop to charge for the first time at an Electrify America charging station. After a bit of time has passed, we are now approaching the first charging station. Our route planner estimated that we'd have 37% state of charge when we got there, and we actually have 36% state of charge. There are three ports available. Time to plug into the first charging station. This is a 350 kilowatt charger. I'm gonna pull open the CCS flap. What does CCS stand for? I already forgot. Combined charging system. Combined charging system. I'll take port number two here. It's just mega horse leg cable plug it in and you have an app to start the charging because this, if I'm not mistaken, with Electrify America comes with two years of free rapid charging? That is correct. And so on the app, what I'm doing is I'm actually going to pick the charger. I don't know if you can see that. We are charger number two and you are on connector two. So I've initiated charging on my phone. Yeah, it's, it's it says, going. welcome Alec or something like that. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It just says initiating charging. Oh, okay, cool. 
But for anyone else, there's just a simple credit card reader right here. Hyundai Ionic 5 charging plan includes 30 minutes of DC fast charging or 60 minutes of level two charging per session. Your car just told me it's charging because it speaks to you. And, and that's what? it. 15 minutes left until 80%. That is insanely fast. It's a very fast charging car. Is it 100, 192 kilowatts right now? 192 kilowatts. Yeah. Pretty neat. That is. That, <laughs> that, is, that is the electrical supply of four American homes maxed out. <laughs> so that is pretty absurd. <laughs> Helping make this car charge a lot faster is the 800 volt battery pack. Yes. 800 volt charging. It's actually a 700 volt battery pack, but it's fa very fast. According to our app, we need to charge to 91% to make it to our next destination. Uh, because we have such a headwind, I'm going to charge to I think 95 and on this car it at the top range is actually not that slow so we'll we'll be here for another maybe 10 minutes on top of 15 minutes but you can see we've already gained four yeah. percent so <laughs> it's incredible this is a 41. Very, 41 you can watch it climb you cannot do that with most EVs yes this is a very fast charger this is currently one of the fastest charging vehicles on the market we hardly need it because we're going to be here charging for about 15 minutes, but the Ionic 5, in case you do spend a long time charging, has seats, front seats that fold almost all the way back, and you've got a little ottoman on the driver's side so you can lay back and take a nice nap while you wait on your car to charge. Quite convenient. Well thought out. All right, we just finished charging, and now we are off to Clarksville, Indiana, which is 171 miles from here. Yeah, we charged for about 30 minutes. We went from 36% to 95%. It only derated down to about 45 kilowatts. Incredibly fast yeah. charging. And if we had unplugged at 80% state of charge, which we might have done if the conditions were more favorable, it would have only been 14 minutes of charging. Yeah, time. it was Yeah, it was less than 15 minutes to get to 80%. It was mind blowing how fast it took to 80%. We're on the highway, we're doing 70. Cruise control is activated as well as self-centering lane assist. I don't want to call autopilot because that's not what they call it. I'm going to turn the drive mode back to eco. So the front motor is physically oh my disconnected. God, 1.3 miles per kilometer. <laughs> <laughs> I've reduced our efficiency slightly. We're now 3.3 miles out from the second charging station on this trip. And what I'm quickly realizing is 200 miles of range is quite a lot. If you're going 60 miles an hour, that's what is that? Four hours of driving. We we took off at about 8.30 o'clock this morning. It's now 3.54 and we're now approaching our second rapid charger of the day. That's a lot of range. <laughs> when you look at it on paper, it means one thing. When you experience it in real life, it means something different entirely. Anyway, we have 29 miles of estimated range left. We're now 2.7 miles out from the next rapid charger and we're down to 15% state of charge remaining. It's a little too early to say this, and we had to plan things out in advance, but it seems so far like an EV road trip is a non-issue. I would agree. I, I, I am surprised how well this is going. Yeah. We just have to see. We'll find out in three minutes what the charger situation is like here. Charging stop number two was just as uneventful as stop number one. So we charged up in about 24 minutes and kept moving on down the road to head to stop number three. We're about to approach our third charger stop after, I don't know, two hours of driving or whatever. This is basically just a road trip at this point, but this charging stop is at the National Corvette Museum, which is mildly interesting because why are there electric car chargers there? Don't know. And just as soon as we arrived, we're now leaving the National Corvette Museum. We were there for like, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. Total charging time was 14 minutes to 80, and then I left it in a little bit while I waited for you to come back. Yeah, I did go into the Corvette Museum to use the bathroom. There were lots of old men in there. Wonder why. Okay, how long, how far away is our next charging destination? 129 miles? Yes. All right. Hello, people of Nashville. You have a Lane Motor Museum that I like very much. And there's probably some other things here too. Get out of my way, Pathfinder. Charging stop number four. We're in Manchester, Tennessee. This charging stop is a bit odd because it's next to a Dollar General rather than a Walmart First or time. a Corvette museum. Bronco. This is getting really uneventful now. It's like stopping at a gas station. We are going to charge up a little more than normal because the next stop, well, the next destin, the next place, we're, we're about to climb mountains. Yes, this station is a little bit different than the others because the charging equipment, the actual charging equipment, is not behind a barrier. It's here, and it makes cool buzzing sounds. And the numbering on this makes perfect sense. One, two, 
A3. Perfect. Good morning. It is the next day. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. We stayed the night at this sweet wood home by Nilty, and he chose this hotel specifically because this hotel has level two EV chargers. Most of these are indeed Tesla chargers, but to adapt to those, he brought this along. Yes, this is often called a Tesla tap. This is not the original brand Tesla tap, but it allows you to connect to their destination chargers and normal J1772 car. I say normal. Yeah. But we ended up not it. using it. We tried it, but and it worked, but we ended up not using it because they have a regular old Clipper Creek charger, a J1772 over here, and we charged up overnight, and the car is now at 95%. Ooh. And this is totally unnecessary, but I want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is a terrible sound it's making. I think it's from the brakes. Probably, yeah. All right, there we go. I can leave it there and the parking lot is now blocked. Goodbye. Day two is more of the same. Drive for quite a while. Hey! Stop to charge. Drive for quite a while. This is what most of the road trip looks like. Stop to charge. Drive for quite a while until, and we made it to our destination hotel. And we didn't plan this out whatsoever, but this hotel not only has level two destination chargers, it even has two DC rapid chargers. I mean, they're only 50 kilowatts capable, and it took me five minutes to set up an app to even get that one going, and it ended up not working at all. So we're charging at this one, which yeah. does work, but we didn't expect them to exist at all, so it's a bonus. Now, statistics. We spent two hours and 20 minutes charging. We consumed 328 kilowatt hours, and we would have spent about 92 bucks. But again, the Ionic 5 here comes with two free years of charging through Electrify America, and those were the only charging stations we stopped at. Now, the, some of these charging stations, depending on the state, charged by the kilowatt hour, and some of them charged by the minute. But because this car charges so quickly, the ones that charge by the minute were significantly cheaper. We're talking about a total charging cost of $5 as compared to $25. We expected to have range anxiety. We expected to have to plan out every detail of this trip. We expected to encounter some issues with the chargers along the way. We even brought our own level two and level one charger with us just in case. But instead, we had no issues whatsoever and it was just a normal road trip. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the single issue that you could say we had was that one charger that didn't quite deliver the full power. But honestly, we could have just kept using that charger and waited a little longer. And on the subject of waiting, we waited a little bit longer at every charger just to give us a little bit more range just in case that we would have an issue, but it ended up never being a factor at all. It and was... even so, most of the time, the car was done charging before I was done goofing around at whatever stop we were at anyway. So yeah. it worked out. It was a pretty seamless and flawless road trip. We're talking like he had to run into Walmart to get a multi-tool. Yeah. And by the time he came out, I was unplugged and yeah. waiting for him. So. And that was the that was the trip that the charger slowed down to 70 kilowatts. Oh, that's right. To, yeah, that's right. as opposed to 240 kilowatts. So, yeah, it was flawless. So to answer the question, what does an EV road trip look like in America in 2022? If you don't have a Tesla, well, it's just fine. Totally doable. It was total non-issue. Now, it is an EV, and you do have to do a modicum of planning for your trip, plan out where your stops are going to be ahead of time, because the charging infrastructure isn't quite there yet. And you do have to stay on the beaten path, but... It is totally doable. Now, one thing that made this trip a little bit better than other EVs is this fantastic Ionic 5. Not only is it a wonderful car, but it charges at insanely fast speeds of 240 kilowatts plus. Now, if you have an EV that can only charge at 150 kilowatts, it will charge slower, but it's not gonna make that big of a difference. It's only gonna make a bigger difference if you have something like a Chevy Bolt. And that's it. The information I wanted to get from this EV trip was a feeling. Am I comfortable doing a road trip in an EV? As I may or may not have said earlier in the video, I have just put down an order for an EV of my own. I'll tell you about that later. But uh, now that I've done an actual road trip, numbers are one thing, but I can tell you definitively that my feeling is, it's gonna be fine. It's going to be no issue. As the charging infrastructure grows, it's gonna be even less of an issue. Now we'll have to see if the rate of EV sales increases faster than the charging infrastructure. That I don't know yet, but as of right now, already, it's almost a non-issue. So thanks to my patrons, as always, and thank you to everyone else for watching. I'll see you next time.